Okay, I think the first thing that I'd like to, the first thing that I'd like to get positive momentum going on is, how do I manage the gap that occurs between, I do find that things show up incredibly quickly when I get on a high flying disc, yeah. which I'm now learning to do yeah. with real frequency. Yeah. And I can feel that something thrilling will manifest and it's thrilling for like 30 seconds. And then there's new contrast in that. And then there's this little trough after that. And I know that there's bigger, more complex coming that there are grids. But you're overthinking in. all of it, really. You're really overthinking there's all no of question it. question in my mind about that. So when you've got that high flying momentum going and you say it lasts about 30 seconds, can you keep it going for 68? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. But we only wanted you to tell us the sometimes yes part. <laughs> but, here, okay, so here's a question about that. That That's, that's perfect and, and leads into this thing that I've been playing with about that the balance and the interplay. Well, here's the thing. Don't lead us into anything that you know we're not going to like. I think you're going to like this. All right, then lead us in. So I think it's kind of cool. Lead us in, but pick your disc and then lead us in. Okay. That's all we're saying. All right, pick here's, my, here's then... my disc. My disc is loving and appreciating everything, including contrast and negative emotion, because they create rockets of desire that expands yeah. everything. Yeah. Step one moments and matter a lot. That's what gets the momentum going in that vortex, yes? Yes. And, and here is one way that I know I can get, I can manage that, that place that works for me. And I think I'd like to grow it a little bit, which is I can go pretty quickly now from I'm feeling a negative emotion to the appreciation of my inner being for my willingness to be here in the physical experience that that's, has that. Well, that's pretty remarkable because that's jumping discs and you must be catching it early on. It may be because now I'm beginning to build, like that's beginning to feel like something of a grid or something of a relationship to me. Like I, I na after a, a, an earlier conversation that I had with you all, I named my inner being Grace so that I could have easier conversations between my physical and yes. non-physical and we converse all the time now. Yes. And, and I... I received this very loving, gentle, mothering, like when you talk about you watch a little baby trying to walk and falling on its rear end and you don't say, get up, you little moron. And, and in my family, we don't say, get up, you little moron. We say, oh my God, you're crippled. And it takes some time before we realize, oh no, you're not crippled, you're an infant. And well, now, not any of that is true. In other words, you took a perfectly delightful story and <laughs> turned it into a reason to explain your dysfunctional family. No, no, but what I'm saying is my inner being is the one who always says, oh, that's okay, you're totally getting your balance, everything is fine, everything is cool. Well, tell that story and, and don't tell the other one. <laughs> but some, I think what, part of what I'm saying is my inner being is going, sometimes there's a value in telling the other story for two seconds to, to, for the path to the improved story. Well, your inner being is never denying the advantage of you exploring contrast. Right. But you've explored the contrast and this conversation that you're having with us right now is about closing the gap. You're talking about the step three moments. And yeah. if you're in a step three moment, then you're not in a step one moment. So how do I close that gap? That's where you started here. How do I practice the higher vibration? And we say, first of all, be aware of whether you're in it or not. And if you're in it, keep it going. And if you're not, change the subject. That really is it. And, and how, do you, how do you weave into that the idea, which is not just an idea, it's clear to me that this is the case, that when you withdraw attention from something, it peters out. So when you encounter that thing that's the problem that you don't want to look at and you look elsewhere and feel elsewhere, does the subject peter out in the same way as the... Well, no, and here's the specific answer that you're looking for. So in knowing what you don't want, you send this rocket about what you do want. And so that's a momentum. It's a momentum that you keep contributing and then source rides that rocket and gives attention to it. And so the momentum of what you are wanting is really building. It's built to a very high, fast moving momentum in your vortex, a momentum that often you are not up to speed with at all. And so when 
you pick up the subject, and we've been describing every, every subject as two subjects, what is wanted and lack of what's wanted. So there's a vortex version of it that is spinning very fast. And then there's a grid version of it, which is your perspective, that could be spinning very fast. And sometimes you want it, but you want it, but you want it, but you want it, but. So the momentum seem like they're almost equal in terms of your airtime. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the real momentum, they're not equal because the vortex version is much, 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 much faster. In other words, when you want it, but, want it, but, want it, but, in terms of your ability to give your attention to it, that might be equal because... You're really going to like this. And we're just going to back up and say this again. You're really going to like this. So do you acknowledge that you've built a vortex version? Oh, yes. That it's been coming over time? Yes. And do you acknowledge that your source is focused upon what you want and that that's spinning really high, that that's a well-being that is tremendous and that when you allow it to manifest, it will be a big deal? Absolutely. That's step one and step two. Now we're talking about step three, which is your choosing of the discs. So I know what I don't want. I know what I do want. Seems equal, but it isn't because you've been doing it and doing it and doing it. And the momentum of your vortex is really, really powerful and fast. Let's call it the well-being of the universe just to punctuate it in the way that we really want you to hear it. It's huge. And when you stop doing that thing you do, then you'll move right into that. In other words, when you stop holding your cork under the water, it will flow right into vibrational alignment with all that that's in your vortex. You following us so far? We've been talking about that for a while. But now we're talking about these grid disks. We're talking about your point of attraction. We're talking about your airtime. We're talking about step three. We're not talking about step one anymore. You set that into motion. We're not talking about step two anymore. You've set that into motion. In other words, that is a done deal. This thing that you want or these things that you want are already vibrationally achieved. So now we're talking about your point of attraction. And in your point of attraction right here, right now, you might be giving some airtime to wanted, some to unwanted, some to wanted, some to unwanted, some to wanted, some to unwanted. We're just talking about your attention to the subject. Some to wanted, some to unwanted, some to wanted, some to unwanted, some to wanted, some to unwanted. Your vortex exists apart from that. Your vortex has already accomplished everything that you're asking for. All of the cooperative components have already been gathered. We're not talking about step one and step two anymore. That's already a done deal. We're talking about what you're doing. This disc, this disc, this disc, this disc, this disc. Isn't it pretty obvious that if you choose this disc, that that stuff will flow into your experience and you will realize it? Do we really have to talk about anything other than step three anymore? No, because that does, that is exactly what happens. And you're reminding me of something that I have such curiosity about and I don't understand it's exactly but before that you go there, spinning. Before you, you go there, did you follow that? In other words, do you accept that step one and step two are done and that step three is yours to do right now and you're doing it when you choose a disc that feels like monotony you're doing it when you choose a disc that feels like overwhelmment you're doing it when you choose a disc that feels like grief you're doing step three and there are all kinds of vortices out there ready to yield to you whatever disc you choose but this disc that you really want this high-flying vortex that you've worked lifetimes to accomplish don't you want to choose that disc that yields you those results isn't that the revelation that you want to receive are you following so much are we confusing you with these discs do you understand that the discs are about the grid, that the discs are about your point of attraction, that the discs are about your now vibration, the discs are about what you're doing right here, right now with your vibration. They're about you selecting the frequency from which some vortex is going to yield to you. Some vortex is going to yield to you depending upon what disc you choose. So choose anger and watch who jumps on your disc with you. Oh, they jump in from all over the place. And you say, what am I doing wrong? And you get all intellectual about it. And you want to talk about the rights and the wrongs of humanity and the inappropriateness of their behavior. And we say, oh, what a waste of conversation. Why do you want to talk about anything except better disc choosing? Better disc choosing is the only thing you want to talk about. You've done all the rest of the work. Step one is done. Step two is done. Choose better discs. That's the only subject. So every question from now on ought to be, how can I get on this disc? What can I do to get on this disc? How can I stay longer on this disc? Can you help me get on this disc? Do you think this is a good disc? How does it feel? Terrible. Then no, it's not a good disc. In other words, 
we've sort of brought the conversation down into something that may seem a little not intellectual enough for you to really enjoy it because you like the nitty gritty of things. But that really is the message. Choose things that feel good and watch what happens because you've done the rest of the work, you see. And I have a son who's about to be 15 years old and he really loves spinning discs, literally physically spinning discs. And it's been clear to me for a really long time that it, it, that is a process for him of improving his frequency. Yeah. It's whenever he gets a little fritzy, gets he'll find something. something. Good. So, Very good. well, so let's let the rest of the conversation today be about selecting the disc and staying on it. In other words, aren't those the questions that you want to ask? Yeah. Hasn't everything yeah. Else been so how do you, what are, like, I, I'm so fascinated with the, the physicality of that process for him and how well it works. And it works miraculously. He speaks almost no words and he gets every single thing that he wants, looks at, thing, I, I mean, he's the most incredible physical manifestation of the law of attraction I've ever seen walking through the world. And I'm constantly going like, as my question in the beginning, how do I do that? Break down what he's doing. You see him as successful. So what are the tenets of his success? He's found something he likes to do and he focuses on it incessantly and is really good at it. Is there any, do you, do you have any, why do you want to make it harder? <laughs> it's so true. I want, because I want that, the thing that you just said before about the highest disc with the vortex that I've been building for lifetimes, that is, this is a, this is a, a, a mix up here. Yeah. That is, that feels infinitely complex. And therefore I think I interpret as being complicated and difficult and well, let's just change the word complex to detailed and let's just change the word detailed to momentum. And let's just say that anything that you give your attention to is going to become more detailed, more specific, more complex. All genius is, is attention to a subject. So pick the disc before you pick the subject and let the subjects that please you jump on the disc. If you're acknowledging a handful of general things, I want to feel good in my life. And I want to feel accomplished and I love the feeling of momentum and I like the feeling of accomplishment. I like the feeling of success. I like the feeling of getting things done. I like the feeling of empowerment. I like the feeling of self-empowerment. I like the feeling of free flowing. I like the feeling of being in the flow. I like the feeling of moving with the laws of the universe. I like the feeling of me getting to choose. I like making choices that feel good. I like how I came to understand which choices do feel good. I love my guidance system. I love knowing that I'm eternal being. I love knowing that the larger part of me is spinning in this very good feeling, high flying vortex. I like knowing that all of that is available to me. I like knowing that I get to make choices. I like making choices. I like making all choices. I like making the good feeling choices and I like making the not so good feeling choices because that helps me to define what the good feeling choices are. I really like being a creator here in this physical environment. I like finding things that interest me. I like playing them out to find out how interesting they can be. I like withdrawing my attention from things that don't feel good. I like not increasing my interest on things that don't feel good. And I like increasing my interest or my momentum on things that do feel good. I like the world that is around me. I like getting to observe others. I like observing people in their high flying emotions and then they're not such high flying emotions. I like watching law of attraction responding to all of us. I like knowing how it works. I like the stability of this environment. I like knowing that I'm the creator of my own reality. I like deliberately applying my thoughts. I like feeling the momentum of a thought. I like staying focused upon something and feeling it moving faster and I like withdrawing my attention from it and feeling it slowing down. I like discovering the actual law-based tenets of momentum. I like withdrawing my intention and feeling it peter out. I like thinking about things that I used to think about a long time ago that I rarely think about anymore. I like realizing that there are many problems that I used to have in the past that I've left way behind just by lack of attention to them. I like recognizing that there are some problems that I keep active in my environment because I keep them actively focused. I keep choosing this that they're on. I love being a deliberate 
creator. This was a very general, very positive conversation that we did not dip off that high flying disc at all. Even though we were talking about people all over the place, even though we were talking about vibrations all over the place, we did not dip from that momentum of that high flying deliberate creation. I'm empowered and I'm the creator of my own reality. Not for one moment during that rampage that we just offered. That's the way that you close the gap. That's the way that you keep the momentum going.